So as most of you guys will know, Louis Vuitton have been struggling or have been really desperately trying their darndest to fill the enormous boots that Virgil left behind when he unfortunately passed away um, a year ago. From what I remember of the conversation online, because it was a little bit weird that a lot of the conversation around his successor was coming so soon after his passing. Of course, some people did the respectful thing and kind of reined it in and stopped speculating, which was nice so people could actually mourn his death for one minute and not just, you know, use it as an opportunity to claim clickbait or whatnot. But over time, things have kind of hastened to the point where they're now probably looking for a long-time successor to kind of took the brand forward now that maybe they've run out of designs from Virgil's sketchbook or ideas and that they can kind of work from and kind of take to the next level so now they're trying to you know move things forward a little bit and i remember when the news first came out about it there were many many amazing names being linked to it people like martin rose grace Wells bonner and a few other people and it looked like they were steering in the direction of like okay we're gonna keep it black because these are marginalized unrepresented um you know talents in that industry who clearly have the ability to create on a higher level. Look at someone like Martin Rose. That's actually done with Demner and Blensarka. It doesn't need to be spoken about too much. And obviously Grace Ward Bonner has obviously shown a lot of aptitude and a lot of talent and a lot of promise early so far in her short career and a few other people. Clearly there's a lot of talent there that if given a bigger platform is definitely going to show and prove. And we're like, okay, cool. That's pretty decent. Let's go forward. And even when they come out, uh, out lately or recently with the whole idea about, oh, it's going to be a creative team around it. And then we heard, Ib, you know, um, Ib Kamara is going to take over. He was kind of helping with the styling before Virgil passed away and kind of really helped to kind of tie things together and make it look really amazing and striking and worthwhile and intellectual and fashion with a capital F with his styling, you know, attention to detail and eye and whatnot. That was all good as well because, you know, there's a lot of good sentiment around Ib Kamara. They clearly had a decent working relationship before he passed away and there's one person who could carry the torch. Maybe it'll be him. But then... It's now being switched and turned all the way around again. And out of the blue, out of absolutely nowhere, out of absolutely nowhere, yes, Jules' is former fiancé. That's the only reason why I know this guy, who he is. This is legitimately, you know, my only recollection of the guy. Apart from that, I hear everyone talking about how nice he is as a person. But apart from knowing that he's a nice guy, I also know him to be, yes, Jules' partner. Because I remember there was a period of time where they were dating and quite serious for a while, I think. And he was the partner that she never kind of mentioned. But, you know, if you knew, you kind of knew. And it says here, super surprise, why Louis Vuitton chose Kid Super to co-create the next menswear collection. I think it's an absolutely terrible choice, personally, for me. Again, i got nothing against the guy's designs. I'm sure he does stuff pretty well. But considering the names that I've mentioned before, this is completely underwhelming. This is underwhelming to the nth degree that this is the person they, they in fact, decided to choose and to go forward with. And if anything, if anything, if you really think about it, really think about it with the pragmatic rational non-emotional point of view and as much as i love and adore virgil and what he did at louis vuitton if you really want to extrapolate and pull yourself away from it and actually think of it from a business point of view and from a taste and presentation fashion and expression and creativity point of view why not just completely divert or completely take a left turn or a right turn and go a different direction and hire somebody with a completely different vision that maybe isn't as streetwear based that maybe isn't as casual, that maybe isn't as bright, that maybe isn't as expressive in that kind of way that he did it, that maybe isn't quite as multidisciplinary and just have something really different, like an absolute opposite of what Virgil is, just to kind of reset the palette and to reset the tone, reset the house, whatever it may be, so push something out different so that we can kind of close that chapter for, for lack of a better term. Because if this is what you're going to try to spin and use as, oh, this is Virgil's legacy that he's kind of laid forth, you know, the creative team of people designing with Kid Super leading the charge and we're going to change the person every single... It's like, no, it's a mess. It's too much. And it's really surprising because really and truly the people that operate at LVMH, you know, the real high level people, they are killers. They're sharks. They're really savvy um, businessmen and women. You'd assume they'd have their finger on the pulse and know what to do because they've done this many different times in many different industries where a charismatic, you know, charming, influential a popular figurehead you know gets disposed or unfortunately passes away and you have to kind of you know bring somebody else up usually just having somebody that kind of just is a regen with a different skin tone is maybe not the right way to go about things especially if the work isn't as good and they're maybe not as well known you just take a left turn and kind of gamble with somebody who's got maybe a different vision a different view of things so that you can kind of restart things and kind of go in a whole new direction that's what you'd hope it would happen but again 
what do I know? I'm just a, you know, a little dusty guy here living in the middle of Stratford talking out my asshole. But let's continue with the article featured on Vogue. It says, Kid Super founder, Colm Delane. Is that his name? Colm Delane. I didn't even know that was his name, actually. My bad. I thought his name was Kid Super. Anyway, it continues. With just two Paris Fashion Week shows under his belt, it's a return next week of a remarkable new gig at Louis Vuitton, the world's largest luxury house. The Louis Vuitton Autumn Winter 2023 menswear collection, which will be presented on the 19th of January, was created by the men's studio with the participation of Dylan. In other words, home is embedded into the men's studio, the house said on Tuesday. The show will also feature stenography from, so how do you say her name? Lena Kutu Vot Kut Sovkaya. Lena Kutsovkaya and French directors Michel and Oliver Gondry who directed a prelude film for the show and expect an appearance from yet to be discussed world famous music star this is budget uh sprite version of flipping Virgil and I don't like it um I saw one of the kids shows super shows where he had a painting and people were bursting out of the painting and wearing the items that felt very art attacky. I'm not going to lie. It felt like I was watching art attack and people were kind of whacking themselves off of it and going crazy off of it. But I remember when Sammy Ross did something similar with a cold wall back in the day when he had his ballerinas and expressive dancers coming out of cubes and turning into stuff and going into clothes. People are saying he was doing too much and trying too hard. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. I'm not feeling this. I'm not going to lie. I'm not feeling this. I think the kids' designs suck. Personally, I don't like them in the slightest. I know Russ loves the clothes that he makes. And I don't look at Russ as a style god. I think he's an amazing business mind. And of course, entrepreneur and whatnot. Advocating for ownership in music industry. But I'm not looking at that guy for style. I'm not looking for Kid Super to kind of set any trends in that way. Like I said, it's just underwhelming in the names. They really did honey dick us. They made it seem as if they were kind of trying to reset the palette by having somebody black. But obviously somebody with a different, you know... Um, taste and different kind of idea creativity or a different presentation level of what they want to do with Louis Vuitton you think someone Martin Rose or Grace Well Bonner they're definitely going to present something different but at least they're black at least they're going to be different voices different faces at the end of that runway who maybe present a different idea of Louis Vuitton but this is just for me trash in the empty degree it continues according to the and I wonder who the world famous music star is going to be is it going to be fucking Ray Schmurder or something like if it's going to be that you can miss me with that shit according to the house this marks the continuation of the talent con collective concept already seen in the last two seasons following the death of Roger Abloh the house's men's dire mentor director um, could, could Sovkaya was a long time collaborator of Ablo, as was Ib Kamara who will be behind the styling of the upcoming shows like I said there's two much of all this stuff just break away and choose somebody properly or just let the people that are doing it before just continue on and let them evolve over time but this kind of multidisciplinary stuff like it's giving lacoste it's giving calvin klein it's giving directionless it's giving no ideas like what is this this is this is nothing you're just by choosing this they choose to do nothing which are, i guess in one way they're trying to appease the crowd and appease the fans in some way shape or form but I don't like this in the slightest. I think this is horrendous. So why has Louis Vuitton elected Dylan? It says as follows. Sorry, Delane. Is it Delane or Dylan? Delane, I'm assuming. It appears that this season's collaborative format, which through his embedded cameo role effectively makes Delane its first ever guest runway designer, has been planned to act as a placeholder. Oh, okay. So they haven't selected or figured out who they want long term. So instead of just pausing things, they're just going to plug this guy in and keep producing you know whatever it may be couldn't Ib Kamara have done this like really and truly couldn't he have done this like would they have needed to come so what they're gonna have three chefs in the kitchen they're gonna have Ib Kamara they're gonna have this Kutsev, Kutsev Koya lady they're gonna have this guy Dilane and who else who else is gonna be in charge of it there's too many cooks in the kitchen already feels like to me but again, what do I know? It continues. Ever since the sudden death of Ablo in November 2021, the house has been carefully considering the sensitive question of who might replace him. A huge arts given Ablo's generational impact and influence. Many names, including Delanes, have been have been what have been smooted. I never heard of this guy's name linked to the with the Louis Vuitton job until they mentioned it right here. I'm not gonna lie, he would have never been a name on my list in the slightest. I would have gone for flipping Kiko, who absolutely hated Virgil, right? But at least he would have been a more fresh, new, artistic, creative, forward-thinking, you know, 
idea or person to have gone with as opposed to this Delane guy. Because if you give it to Delane, you might as well give it to Mike and Mary. Like, what, what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing here? However, by handling the task of headlining its menswear output only temporary to Delane, it deflates that pressure while simultaneously affording the company time to align and execute the future plans to creative strategy and possibly eventual appointment of a long-term successor to ablo it doesn't do any of that if anything if anything it just adds more pressure because if this guy's presentations or collections going forward are duds then people are just going to look at it and just you know what a waste of time what a waste of resources what a waste of money so much for flipping um, sustainability and then suddenly you're getting someone else new to reset everything again what's the point all this time they had to, to, to select somebody they didn't do it they didn't pick because they can't make a decision because there's no easy ready-made person to pluck out there that's what that's what also makes me think these ideas of picking people like virgil and matthew williams to do javon she and stuff as amazing as they are for someone like myself being a streetwear kid and being a fan of the scene and how kind of genre defining and kind of influential they're going to be and motivational they're going to be for the kids coming up and you know it means a lot to us coming up as well from that kind of scene whatnot if you actually think about it it's the easy decision in the world to make because those guys are the ones that are covered all over the main platforms like Hypebeast and whatnot. They're the ones that all the kids follow on social media. They're the ones connected to all the big and popping people on social like artists and whatnot and creatives and whatnot, right? They're, they're out there doing the thing on the field and putting up numbers and being, you know, um, noteworthy and being somebody that people think have a lot of clout and influence and blah, blah, blah. So picking those people to lead your company isn't that hard of a decision to make, really. It's not that difficult. If Heron Preston keeps doing what he's doing with his brand and Nicky building, I could see him getting selected for a house. Would it be a surprise? Not really, because he's an obvious big choice to pick out of all those guys that came out of the, you know, out of the flipping umbrella of Kanye and Virgil and whatnot. It makes sense to pick someone like him. But the actual hard decision to make is who you pick after the fact or who you pick outside of those people who are the bait clouty names. I can't even think of somebody like a Tremaine Emery with what he's doing at Dead and Tears and whatnot going forward. I can even see him getting a big job at a fashion house sometime soon if he wanted to. And clearly, that would be an easy decision to make considering his connection with Virgil, his connection with Kanye, his stuff he's doing with you know Supreme, the other stuff he does himself, blah, 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 blah. But when they actually you know have to make an actual informed critical important divisive decision guess what happens they put a placeholder in place and essentially they kind of throw this guy under the bus because you know come on brother i'm seeing some of his pictures here from his show from spring 2023 if this is what we have to see on the runway for fucking louis vuitton i'm already i'm already pissed it says here lvmh owned louis vuitton is the world's largest luxury house its sales surged 20 percent to 20.6 billion in 2022 and are expected to reach 21.9 billion in 2023 this is without a quote-unquote leader in the men's division according to hsbc estimates menswear may not represent the bulk of the business okay i take that back but the role of the men's artistic directors given the size of the house and the importance of leather goods which represent over 10 percent of the house's sales according to analysts and the halo effect of the men's design creative vision of the overall brand's desirability so clearly that menswear director role has a lot of cachet and influence in the overall sales of louis vuitton louis vuitton but i don't see what this guy from was he from la or whatnot is gonna do i really don't i'm not gonna lie i don't i don't really see what he's gonna do there today's news is only the last latest twist in a designer who possesses an uncanny talent for manifesting a, a, that apparently impossible delaying created kid super monica 15 year old high schooler who with his friends had a side job printing street shirts so what is this like giving bobby hundreds the role of flipping what um creative director of flipping chanel or something like what well, one for this in his early 20s he informally founded the house from a from a ramshackle teal painted brooklyn apartment that he shared with his fellow creatives in order to record music and shoot videos in 2018 he formalized the marquee he says the idea of the young um this young person who believes in anything is possible and is the basis of kid super said delane during a a past interview with Vogue Runway and it pushes you to be better understanding that maybe nothing is too far-fetched yo this is too woo-woo and motivational speaking as well to be honest for me I don't like this there was no one asking me to come to Paris Fashion Week that very much seemed far-fetched but when I spoke to my friends about it I kind of just jokingly to say I think the next step might be Paris Fashion Week everyone believed I could do it because it's this alter ego of Kid Super where everything is possible you shoot for the stars as old Brendan would say you shoot 
aim for the moon, you aim for the stars. Um, late in 2019, Delaney's application to join the official schedule was approved by the Fédération de la Haute Couture et de la Mode. His acceptance letter featured the opening dress of the first show of February 2020. A series of compelling digital presentations followed during the pandemic period by which Delaney had caught the eye of MH Prize global talent identification operation. Bruv, if he puts out LVMH NFTs, I'm done. Uh, this smells like crypto, isn't it? This smells like crypto. Maybe I'm hating, but this smells crypto-y. Abloh was among the judges who awarded Delaney the 150,000 car log of a prize in 2021, accepting it that day. Delaney joked that before the mentorship with LDMH that comes, the prize that began, he hoped to be dancing with his founder and group section, um, group scion, Delphine Alno, as evidenced by today's announcements, Louis Vuitton has continued to foster his relationship with the designer as he built his maverick and inclusive brand. Um, brands including Jumper, Gautier and Asia's Factory have shifted towards a guest design model. Most recently, Lacoste announced it's moving the tools, a collective approach. Yeah, you know what? Give Delane Lacoste. Lacoste actually suits him way better than flipping Louis Vuitton would, especially as a first dilliance into that field. Throwing him right in the deep end with LVMH, considering the stuff that he's done prior, makes no sense personally to me, especially considering who he's following. It's really, really a poison chalice. He would have fitted much better at Lacoste. But hey, what do I know? For Louis Vuitton, it's a philosophy that resonates with its late artistic director's practice. Prior to his death, Abel was working with LVMH to create a platform to launch new brands and form cutting edge partnerships with existing ones. Delaney is an outsider to Paris fashion and might have been made a part of the appeal. And unlike, and like Abel, he has a streetwear background. No, the streetwear background, so guys are throwing it around like it's nothing. I don't know, man. I think this is horrendous, personally. I think it might end up ending in tears. Obviously, you know, just as a kind of chancer and as somebody who people didn't really recommend or count out, you, I can't help but root for the guy. But from what I've seen so far, you know, people painting on the stage like Art Attack style and bursting through canvases and wearing them as dresses and stuff in some, you know, weird 21st, whatever, Gen Z version of flipping, you know, what flipping Alexander McQueen had done. I'm not really too sure if that's going to work personally for me. But hey, stranger things have happened. I just think it's a real disappointment and a real letdown after all the amazing names that Louis Vuitton were linked with, the Martin Rose, the Grace Wells Bonners. I keep mentioning that they went and chose this guy in the end. If anything, if you want to really have a change and really kind of reset everything and kind of take stuff in a new direction, actually go in a new direction and pick somebody completely different in terms of aesthetic in terms of design principles in terms of codes in terms of whatever else that they do and somebody like a kiko again like i said before doesn't necessarily have the greatest things to say about virgil from the time i remember you should check some of the stuff he used to post about the guy's designs and whatnot he would have been a probably a better introduction or a better person to put in that position but maybe who else knows maybe some of these guys don't want to work for louis vuitton don't want to work for bmh that could be also the factor, right? Martin Rose is a pretty popping brand. Why would she want to work under, you know, LVMH? Same goes for Grace Wells Bonner, right? She probably maybe is looking for investment, looking to take the brand to the next level. So doing all that stuff and also working for LVMH with your own brand, you kind of get to a position where you're going to have to pick one or the other. So maybe I can understand it from that point of view as well going forward. You never actually know. But I think this is incredibly underwhelming personally for me looking at it and disappointing to see considering with the names and everything going forward but you know these brands are going to do what they're going to do these brands are always going to do what they're going to do